Welcome back to Emergency Chaos, where we provide tips and tricks to help you become a better ER nurse. Today, we are going over the ACLS cardiac arrest algorithm. If you want to continue learning to master the essentials of the ER, such as vasopressors, emergency conditions, obtaining a rapid history and physical, and much more, check out our book on Amazon, link in a pinned comment and in the description. Now, if the patient is pulseless, you must start CPR. If they remain pulseless from the field after being brought in by emergency services, you must continue the CPR. Good CPR is key for maintaining cerebral and coronary perfusion. Provide oxygenation with the bag valve mask if no advanced airway is in place. Attach the pads and the defibrillator and connect onto the cardiac monitor and add end tidal CO2 capnography if possible at this time to assist with patient monitoring. From here, the most important question will be, are they in a shockable rhythm? The rhythms associated with cardiac arrest include a systole, postless electrical activity, ventricular fibrillation, and postless ventricular tachycardia. The two shockable rhythms are going to be ventricular fibrillation and postless ventricular tachycardia. The not shockable rhythms are going to be a systole and postless electrical activity. If they are in a shockable rhythm, early defibrillation is going to be ideal. The longer a shockable rhythm remains, the less likely it may respond to defibrillation. Defibrillation essentially overrides electrical activity in the heart. We hope that by doing so, the heart's normal electrical pathways take over and the patient resumes normal sinus rhythm that produces a pulse. Guidelines state that shock energy for the initial defibrillation is 120 to 200 joules. However, though, in cardiac arrests, in the cardiac arrests that I have participated in, the maximum of 200 joules has always been used. After defibrillation, immediately resume CPR for two minutes. You don't check the rhythm immediately after defibrillation because even if it converts back to normal sinus rhythm, it takes time for contractions to be effective again. Again, CPR is essential for maintaining cerebral and coronary perfusion. At this point, if it's not already in place, obtain IV or IO access. Now, after the two minutes are up, perform a pulse rhythm check. Is it shockable? If it is shockable, you're going to defibrillate at 200 joules and resume CPR for two minutes. If it has not yet been given, administer one milligram of epinephrine every three to five minutes. Epinephrine, due to its mechanism of action, is thought to help improve cerebral and coronary perfusion. If an advanced airway is not in place, consider placing an ET tube. Now, is the rhythm shockable after two minutes? After the two minutes of CPR, we're going to perform another pulse rhythm check. Is it shockable? If it is shockable, we're going to defibrillate at 200 joules and immediately resume CPR for two minutes. If not yet given, administer an antiarrhythmic such as amiodarone or lidocaine. Both reduce the irritability of heart cells, which help terminate ventricular fibrillation and pulses ventricular tachycardia. The first dose of amiodarone is 300 milligrams IV push. If a repeat dose is needed, 150 milligrams IV are given. And if not yet performed, we need to start addressing the reversible causes of cardiac arrest. These include hypovolemia, hyperkalemia, acidosis, tension pneumothorax, tamponade, tonsils, and thrombosis. These are known as the H's and T's of cardiac arrest. Now, if at any point when performing a rhythm check, if the rhythm is not shockable, we go down a different pathway. Remember, the two non-shockable rhythms are going to be a sicily and pulses electrical activity. If the rhythm is not shockable, you're going to resume CPR for two minutes. And if not yet performed, we're going to place an IV and an IO, and we're going to administer one milligram of epinephrine every three to five minutes. We're also going to place another ET tube if it's not in place down this pathway, right? Once the two minutes are up, we're going to ask ourselves again. We're going to perform another rhythm pulse check. If the patient remains in a non-shockable rhythm, we're again going to resume CPR. 
And at this point, and on this pathway of the non-shockable rhythms, we're going to start addressing the reversible causes. These include hypovolemia, hyperkalemia, acidosis, tensionumal, tamponade, toxins, and thrombosis. And like I said, it's the H's and T's. As you can see, there are similarities and differences. Both are going to have rhythm checks every two minutes, epinephrine every three to five minutes, high quality CPR, and addressing the reversible causes. On the shockable side, the difference is that a shock will be delivered and an antiarrhythmic will be given. In a code, you may find yourself going from one side to the other, depending on what the rhythm is during the pulse check. Now, let's go over specific nursing tips. To make everything as smooth as possible, ensure roles are assigned. Coordinate with your provider how often they want epinephrine to be administered and how often they want rhythm checks. Ask as well about traditional medications that are often given during a code, such as calcium chloride and sodium bicarb. Some providers may want to administer this initially early on in the code. Others may want to wait until the H's and T's are being addressed. Since you are going to be most likely the recorder, you need to keep track of how many rounds of CPR, how many meds have been given, how much of each, and the patient's overall downtime. Any cardiac arrest lasting more than 30 minutes has very poor outcomes as a result of progressive organ damage that occurs. When it comes to the medications, make sure you push them fast. They can't get any more dead, right? So you're trying to help and we need to get those meds in them. Do not defibrillate a systole or PEA. Place pads in an anterior posterior manner and ensure you perform a different role dur during each different cardiac arrest so that you get the full experience of what being a part of a cardiac arrest is. And as always, teamwork makes the dream work. And here at Emergency Chaos, we are proactive, not reactive.